This is a Mobile Vetter K Yacht Techno Line 59. I think this is probably the most compact A class motorhome I've ever seen. It's actually just fractionally under six meters, it's 5.99. Um, you can have these at just under three and a half tonne to drive on a standard driving license, but in fact this one's been upgraded to 4.4 tonne, which means that you need a C1 license, but it also means that you have over a tonne of payload, which is a very nice feature. It's a smart looking machine, they make these in Italy, and we're going to take a wander around and give you the full tour. Well, that's a pretty cool looking motorhome, isn't it? Based on the Fiat chassis, it's got the 180 horsepower engine and it's got automatic transmission, which is nice. But let's trundle on around and I will give you the full tour. Now, there's a couple of bits on the outside. There's a couple of little lockers and one large locker. So if I open the right one, there we go. There's a little, it's almost like a little boot locker there, isn't it? Just to put your shoes and things like that into. That's the exhaust for the heating system if it's running off the gas. We've got a 240 volt hookup, so you can get 240 volt mains power. That one there is the water filler. And if we come right on around to the back, you can see we've got the uh, presets for a bike rack. Also got a reversing camera on this one. That is, where is it? Just there. And that one then is the cassette for the toilet. And if we come on around this side, it does look a big six metre machine, if that makes sense. This is the garage. Check this out. This is actually quite a decent size and there's some neat little ideas in here. So for example, these are shelves which you can fold out. So they literally just sort of fold out flat. The reason you can fold them away is if you want to get something tall in there. Well, that goes right up to the ceiling. We've got the ladder in here and I'll show you what that's for when we go inside and a few of the bits and pieces that come with it. Um, the navigation kit, for example, the box for that is in there and so forth. So that is that. If we come around a little bit further, that one means that if you've got a barbecue, you can plug it into there. And talking of which, if we come over here, then this one is for your gas bottles. And then finally on the outside, that's the uh, diesel filler. And that one there is just another small locker on the outside of the vehicle. All of these are lockable, obviously. And in particular that one, which will make a lot more sense as to why I'm telling you that when we go inside. We've got little strip light across there to give a bit of illumination. But this is the interior. This is rather special. Look at this. Very modern, very, very spacious for a sub six metre vehicle. And very comfortable. Now this will travel with four people. It'll sleep three people. So as well as the seats here, which as you've probably worked out for yourself, swivel around to be a bit tricky to drive. Otherwise there are two seat belts in behind here. So you move this cushion out and they're tucked in behind there. You bring them around onto the outside and then you are good to go. This table is on a telescopic leg. So you can drop that down. There's an infill cushion and that makes into a single bed across there. But there's another bed as well, which I'll show you in just a moment. We'll come right to the front. First of all, these seats, as mentioned, spin. That's the automatic transmission selector. I mentioned it was the Fiat chassis, so hence the Fiat steering wheel with all the buttons on it for your phone and your cruise control and all that sort of stuff. And that one there is a display for the navigation and for that reversing camera. And then we've got air conditioning there as well, which is the digital style. You just dial in the temperature you want and it sorts all that out for you. But what we can do as well with this area is this. We can if we release a little catch on the side of the seat, which is a bit tricky with one hand. <laughs> I'm holding a GoPro. There we go. Let's drop that one down. Let's do the same on that one. And you can actually drop these whether the seats are facing forward or backwards. So depending on, on how you want to set it up. But with those down, you might wonder where that extra bed is. Well, it's up here. Check this out. We we'll release that little chap there. There we go. Pull on that. And that drops into position like that. Look at that. Big double bed right up there in the front. That smaller cushion, that is the infill cushion for the, um, uh, for the table that converts, as I just mentioned. Also, that ladder that we saw out in that garage area, that, of course, clips in to give you access to that. And there's also a little net there 
and that means you can put that up there make sure that nobody rolls out of bed <laughs> sounds like someone's just dropped something doesn't it so that i think is <laughs> i try again that i think is excellent really really good really uses that space twice because obviously at night it means you double that up from the daytime it's either driving or it's part of the social area at night well it's a great big bed okay let's push that one back up so that literally just pulls towards you and then goes up like so i love the lighting in here look at the way they've done this in here you can see it all the way around got the blue lighting in there as well it's a really modern funky looking machine isn't it We've got opening skylights, which is a good thing today because it's really, really hot here. Again, more of that lighting with the logo embossed in it and then another opening roof section there. These have got, that was my shoe squeaking, I didn't stand on a mouse. These have got blinds that come across like this and we've got bug screens. And in fact, talking about bug screens, if we come right around here, we'll find there's one just inside the door like that. So you can pull that across, leave the door open, get plenty of air in and, uh, and stop the bugs coming in. The other thing we've got while we're pointing in this direction is up here because if we push that button there we can light that up and that is giving us access into see how warm it is things like the resources that's giving us the battery voltage for the starter battery for the engine and the leisure battery also tanks fresh water and wastewater of course they're empty at the moment because this is brand spanking new if we come back out of there we can go into the climate try again there we go um, and that will control the Audi heating system. There's an interesting factor about that, actually, which I'll mention in just a moment. Come back out of there, we can go into the hot water system. So everything is controlled via this. The water pump, outdoor lights, interior lighting, all that can be switched directly from there. And then there are obviously switches as you go around, ordinary light switches as well. Um, you'll also see, or pointed this way, there's a 12 volt socket here, and there's a TV and a satellite socket as well and that's because you can put a tv on here if you want to in fact they do a pack that's full of options and i can't remember they did tell me exactly what it had um but i think it's things like a bike rack and other bits and pieces and part of that is a flat screen tv in there if you want it so like all these things there's various options that you can select from um what else can i show you while we're pointed this way i can show you this storage locker in here and then we've got obviously the opening windows about the place like so i'm going to put those seats back up i think because it just looks nicer doesn't it hold on there we go that's one it just a little twist thing on the side here so if we twist that and lift we get the seats back up there we go okay another thing i wanted to mention actually a lot of the heating systems in vehicles of this size are the um the warm air, so they literally just blast warm air out of little vents. This has got the proper radiators down the back of here. How we can see these. Let's see if we can get this off. <laughs> Not very well, but just down there. You can see it from the top. Hopefully you can see it, but it's actually got proper little radiators like you'd have at home, tucked away in behind. So rather than having pockets of hot air being blown out, you just get the warmth wafted out like you get at home. More storage down this side, so oh, fairly self explanatory, isn't it? But shelves in these, like so. I always got a little, little mobile Vita sign on them, that's rather nice. Another one here, of course. <laughs> Probably figured that one out for yourself. And that takes us to the galley or the kitchen, which is here. And you'll notice we've got a three burner hob, two of which are gas and one of which is electric. Now, of course, that one only works when you're plugged into the 240 volt power, but that's a proper sort of halogen hob style of thing, uh, or induction hob, I should say. <laughs> it does actually say it on it. And then these, of course, run off the gas for when you're not plugged into mains power. The sink is underneath here. And then down here, this is quite a decent storage area in here because it all pulls out like this cutlery in that one etc and then there's an oven and a combination uh, grill as well that's down underneath there and then more bits of storage in places like this and down underneath and in fact we'll lap all the way around because on this side we have 
big storage locker there and hanging rail in that one. So two decent sized lockers there for a, let's not forget, sub six metre vehicle. That is pretty impressive. Fridge is here as well. Mustn't forget the fridge. And freezer. But this mirror has even got lighting built into it around here. It's a very, very smart job. That's the light switches as you come in, those little silver chaps there. And the only thing left then is the bathroom. And that is right at the back and it goes right the way across. So it's a really good size. If we open this door here, check this out. The toilet is there and there's a proper separate shower compartment. So that has got doors here. Of course, you unclip these to get at it. That's to stop it flapping around when you're driving. But yeah, it folds across like that. Everywhere you go in this, it just feels a bit bigger than you would expect for the size of the vehicle. I think that's excellent. A little light in there, like so. But actually, let's turn that back off again because I love the lighting they've put in behind here and behind here. That's really, really smart. We've got, um, he says, <laughs> where's it gone? Ah, there we go. You have to push. That opens like that, a bit more storage. And then yet more storage down underneath there. Toilet is there. And the sink is there. And the last thing to show you in here, which you might not expect, was light switches there. There we go. Again with the little monogrammed light overhead. This is access back into that garage area. That's the door on the outside. Obviously, that's why it's quite important that that locks, which it does for security. But it means you can get straight into there. If there's something you want to get out, and you don't want to go out in a pouring rain, for example, and you can just open that and get straight to it, which is nifty. Love this finish in here, this sort of high gloss finish. That looks great. And then you've got the mat here. So they've kind of combined it in different places to give a different sort of sense of feel to it. But that, I think you'll agree, keep saying it, but sub six metre is pretty impressive, isn't it? There we go. I am going to take a seat down here. And I'm going to say massive thanks to Marquis up in Exeter. They organised this tour. They've got this vehicle up here in stock. Huge thanks as ever, of course, to you guys for watching it. Let me know what you think of that. And I'll catch you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.